It's always sweatshirt weather. What's the LB? Left bench. Okay. Coach, thoughts on the scrimmage, then we'll take questions. Yeah, uh, you know, I thought for our first time inside the stadium, um, I thought there were some good things that took place between both sides of the ball. And we also were able to get some good work for our special teams units as well. So um, I thought both sides of the ball, if you look at the way the scrimmage went, we had the ebb and flow that you like to see as a head coach. Offensively, we made some plays. Defensively made plays. There is definitely, um, with our one unit, you can see a distinct difference between our ones and twos. And for the next half of this, the, the second half of spring ball, we've got to really catch the two unit up. Um, there shouldn't be that much of a drop off. And so I want to see our twos continue to improve so that there isn't that big of a drop off. And that's the challenge here. And, and we got to kind of get that. I feel really good about both uh, units with our ones out there and a few players that have done played both ones and twos. And then I also feel good about the work that we've been able to get accomplished on special teams. Um, you know, today for our first time inside the shell, uh, we didn't have a lot of penalties. It wasn't a sloppy deal. So I was happy about that. Though, like I told the, you know, the team, we do need more guys to step up and take the next step so that we can develop depth and, uh, on, on all three phases, offensively, defensively, and special teams. With the special teams, I know you have Petrino back at kicker, mm -hmm. punter is up in the air. Right. How, how are some of the other things there looking at this point too? Do, Good. You, feel, do you feel like you'll have ideas as to who your punt returner and kick returner are going to be? Yeah, we, we've got a, a pretty good idea. We're moving, uh, as we move through spring practice, we're getting a bunch of guys that have the ability to return punts. Uh, you know, Jay Sean Jones, DJ, uh, also has the opportunity to return punts as well as uh, Rayshard Lewis has shown some abilities there. And the same thing with the kickoff return. Uh, we've got some returning guys that have had success as kickoff returners. So feel good with the return game. Um, I like the way the kicking game has progressed, especially the field goal stuff. You know, with our punt, uh, you know, our punt team, the scheme and the base way that we do things, I feel really comfortable that we've got that part of it installed. Obviously the punting situation and the punter situation uh, will be determined as we move through spring and also with some of the guys that we have coming in uh, uh, during summer camp. Coach, when you spoke to us on Tuesday, you were mentioning how the offense is a little bit behind the defense. Yeah. You weren't pleased with you know, some of the sloppy plays. But I did, over the course of the week, did they catch up at all? Did they show you what you wanted to see out here today? Well, yeah, as I said earlier, I mean, in opening statements, I thought both sides of the ball uh, did some really good things. I mean, as a head coach, when I walk off the field, I don't feel like, man, we've got a lot of work to do on either side, per se, as if one side was just definitively better today. You know, obviously, as I said last uh, earlier this week, you know, when you practice, we script everything. And so the defense knows what plays come and the offense knows what defense coming. And, and, and typically you'll see the defense usually start a little bit ahead. But today I thought we got some really good work. The coaches are off the field. The players were on the field. We spotted the ball and just let those guys go play. And we really saw some guys uh, step up and make some plays on both sides of the ball. And like I said, I was pretty pleased walking off the field that, you know, I don't have this knot in my stomach that like, man, we're so far behind on either side or the special teams. Now, again, as we go to evaluate the film and we watch it and we grade it, you know, come Tuesday, I may have a different opinion once we watch it, but I just thought the, discipline in practice without a bunch of penalties, uh, understanding situational football that we put them in. Some guys really stepped up and made plays. Uh, I saw some guys improve. And I think the biggest takeaway for me is just, I got to get the other guys outside of our one unit playing at a higher level so that there shouldn't be a huge drop off uh, between ones and twos. And so and we've got some talented players on our two unit that just need to take the next step from a competition standpoint. And just to follow up to that point, it, it, it sounds like, you know, there's, like you said, that drop off from the, one, the first team to the second team. At this point, you know, in spring, did, do you feel like you have more of the depth chart, in, at least in your mind, solidified than you expected to have? Not necessarily early? the complete depth chart, but um, we're starting to formulate opinions on what guys we feel can play winning football for us. Uh, you know, we're, what, nine practices in now uh, for us. And so, yeah, as coaches, and this is really the first extended scrimmage opportunity for us to really see with the ball being spotted, referees, we had the Big Ten officials there today managing the, the, the scrimmage. So 
uh, it was good for us to see some guys uh, necessarily step up and show their playmaking ability. Any particular injuries today? Nothing that I can necessarily report on. You know, we had some, a couple of uh, bumps and bruises. Some guys went off the field, but uh, I'll know a lot more about that after uh, I get back inside. Mike, can you talk about um, Max Port and Schlager's, uh, what he's done this spring? And uh, obviously, he's had an interesting career here in terms of, you know, getting a lot of playing time when guys have been hurt, getting hurt himself. Where is he staying? Yeah, I mean, I think with all the quarterbacks, you know, they all took turns rotating in with the one unit. Um, Max is a guy that has some playing experience, like you said. He has some natural quarterback instincts. He has some skill set that he has shown in practice. Uh, you know, what I'd like to see all three of the guys or all four of the guys that we have out there is just the leadership and the moxie that the quarterback position presents itself. You know, uh, I'm coming from a place where those guys kind of control the, the tempo, the unit. And I think right now, all of those guys are just kind of feeling their way through. Um, they've studied their tails off. They have a good understanding of what we want to do on the offensive side of the ball from a schematic standpoint. But I would like to see those guys really step up and the leadership part that goes with playing that position. For, for your offense, how valuable do you see the tight end position and how guys kind of like Chig and, and, and Dolph Barnes and guys like that kind of emerge in your mind over the course of the spring? Yeah, you know, the use of the tight end and, and also the running backs, especially in the passing game, um, you know, to me, it's a, a matchup situation where, you know, typically if you've got a tight end that has a skill set and you get a matchup against a linebacker, it should be a win for the offense. So uh, the tight end will play a prominent role in what we do as long as he is a matchup issue. If it's not a win from a matchup situation, and this is what we have to do as coaches, is figure out personnel, what personnel gives us the best chance. And it may end up being four wideouts. You know, and if, you know, if our tight ends aren't making plays and performing in a perfect world, you'd like the tight end to be a, a really integral part of what we do because of the flexibility that they give us with the skill sets. And I think, you know, uh, Noah and, and Chig both have uh, really good skill sets and they've both really kind of taken some steps forward. And I've seen them make some plays out there uh, the last few days. O offensive line versus defensive line. Who pops right now in, in your mind pops uh, up the field. It's, it's been pretty good go. I mean with the ones, when the ones go against the ones, I mean our both sides of the ball, the ebb and flow of it, uh, you know, it goes back and forth, which is what I really liked about the scrimmage. I mean we had some long runs today where the offensive line did some good stuff. We had some run stops on third and one where I thought the defensive line did a really good job with uh, attacking. So I've been pleased with the way both sides of the ball up front have competed and, and, and hasn't necessarily been dominated on either side of the ball, and it's been really good competition. Todd Capehart's coming off a knee injury. How's he looking so far this spring? I mean, like you said, coming off a knee injury, he's making the, the, the steady progress that is to be expected. Mike, in terms of using uh, guys that you know are going to be key guys next year, like, like a McFarland on offense or Antoine Brooks on defense, do you have a philosophy about how much – live reps they're going to get on a day like today or even in practice where you don't want to put them in a situation where, you know, risk injury or anything like that? No, I don't think we're at that point where, where we can necessarily do that. We're in a competitive situation where I want to see Ant compete and I want to see Antoine compete. I want to see both those guys in live situations. Again, as I told you, I haven't watched a lot of film or any film from last season other than what I saw on TV. And so for all these guys, it's proving ground time. And, you know, I want to see Ant live and compete. And as we progress and move forward, as, as it starts unfolding, if we feel like we need to protect guys, we'll try to do that. But right now, I like the way the competition's going. And we've got a, a really deep backfield uh, situation and backfield group. Uh, and like where I just came from, I want to find ways to implement and use all the talent that we have on that side of the ball. And just like on the defensive end, you know, Antoine Brooks is a playmaker for us. It's a new system that he has that he has to learn. So right now we can't afford to necessarily save guys or pull guys out worrying about injuries. we got to have them go out, compete, and, and show us what they're capable of. And just to follow up on that, I mean, um, you, when you were here uh, a few years ago, you had a pretty good group of running backs. Um, and I know you don't like to compare, but, but is this as deep? a group as as Maryland has had in your you know in your memory of, of I mean I think that it's a very comparable 
And as you say, comparisons are the kiss of death for us. I do know, you know, of the time I've been here, I mean, there's been times where I've had Lamont Jordan, Bruce Perry, and Chris Downs in the same backfield. And so we've always had really good backs. I think we have a tradition of having really good running backs that have come through this program. And I feel like the group of running backs that we have now, you know, even with Lolo and, and Jake, who haven't necessarily participated, thrown into the mix with the, the guys that we have in the program with, you know, Javon Leak and Fleet Davis and, and then Ant. Uh, I feel really good that that's one of the position strengths of our team and that we've got to figure out and, and find a way to utilize all those guys' talents um, to make sure that we uh, help ourselves be successful on that side of the ball. Do you, do you have the same amount of uh, install in now that you did at Alabama the last couple of years? We've tried to keep on pace. You know, I've had a base install that I've used, and right now we've forced it and stayed on pace with it. Maybe maybe a few plays behind and where we have been, but when you look at year one, it should be a few plays behind. But I, we've been able to get our the nuclei, uh, the nuts and bolts of our systems in place offensively, defensively, and special teams in the first nine practices. And as a follow up to that, how have they taken to the new system? Uh, it's, it's been good and bad. Um, I think for the most part, they know what to do. And now for us as coaches, and this is what this first scrimmage inside the shell has kind of showed us was like, now let's get to the attention to detail, the attention of the detail of how to do it. They know what to do, and now we've got to clean up the how to do it and the base fundamentals that go along with it. And then learning to play, you know, to the standard that we want to see our team play at. About how many hours does the staff put in? What time do guys usually roll into the facility? Well, I mean, we're in here a long time. I mean, we're using, most guys are in here by 7, 7.30. And, you know, last night we had our coaches clinic going on here. So a lot of us didn't leave till, you know, 11, 12 o'clock last night. And was back in, we're back in here today at 7.30 for staff. Um, we understand that obviously coming in as a new staff, mm -hmm. we got to put a lot of time into it. And, and, and that's the nature of the beast. But... Um, as we kind of, as we progress as a uh, as a staff with knowing how we practice, knowing the schemes, I mean, we'll put the base time that everybody else puts in. Time for a couple more. Given that you've been a little short-handed at offensive line, you've been moving Fontaine over. How has that group kind of held up? And is that a situation where it's hard to get a read, or do you have a better read just because guys are getting more opportunities? Well, I think the move of moving Austin Fontaine over there has really helped us. Um, I think he's got a chance to be a talented uh, offensive lineman for us. He, a guy that plays with power, um, has a little uh, nasty streak to him, and you know it is not new to him because he's played it obviously in high school. Um, but and like I said uh, earlier, you know I think I've been really pleased with the first offensive line, that first unit. We probably have six guys you know, six to seven guys that kind of rotate in with that unit that have all kind of played at a, a, a pretty high level. Uh, but what, obviously what we've got to get done though is we've got to get those young linemen and those guys that are rolling in with the twos to kind of grow up a little faster and get those guys playing at a, a higher level so that we don't have such a drop off. Has anyone uh, in particular stepped up at safety in the absence of uh, Antoine Richardson? Um, yeah, you know, Mosley is really a guy that jumps out um, just in practice. He plays really physical. I know we've kind of moved him back to the middle of the field and, and instead of having him down where he's played in a strong safety role. Um, uh, those type of guys, you know, you see some of the young guys, uh, you know, stepping in, Dion is, is coming along good. But like I said, right now our one unit has really shown, shown some consistency at playing at the type of level that we want our guys to play. And what we've got to do these next six practices, the next couple of weeks that we have, is bring the twos up and get those guys competing a little better. Thanks, Coach. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.